Hi everyone, back there on my YouTube channel. It's Chris back with a match preview for Newcastle United's upcoming Carabao Cup game against Nottingham Forest at the City Ground this Wednesday, 8 p.m. We will be live on Sky as well for this game, so hopefully they'll spend longer than all of about 10 minutes talking about us like they did the other day. But I'm a bit worried about this game, to be honest with you. I think Forest are no mugs. I think they're probably the best of the, the three teams that were played in the opening of this new season so far in terms of Southampton, Bournemouth and them with all due respect to both those other teams. So this is not going to be an easy game at all. We're going to get stuck right into this, talk about how we think the lads are going to line up, talk a little bit about Forrest as well. There's a couple of familiar names in there. One in particular does concern me a bit and talk about how we think the game is going to go. Just before we do that, a little reminder, as we always say, if you haven't already smashed subscribe, come help us get to that next milestone. We're looking to get the 9K. We've got a great prize to give away for 9K, a really good bit of little memorabilia for a Newcastle fan. You can you can stick away in your draw or frame if you want, depending on how you view it as an important bit of memorabilia. But we'd love to get a 9K soon. And then on to that is 10K. I've got an unbelievable prize for that. I've ordered it, I'm waiting for it to come in, and I want you to win it. So we keep smashing that button, recommends to family and friends, why don't you, and help get us there as quick as we can. So let's get stuck into this game then. So 8 p.m. kickoff down at the city ground, not an easy place to go. Uh, I quite like what Forrest have done uh, in terms of the of the building of this squad. And uh, it's not going to be an easy game whatsoever. It really, really isn't. You know, so so looking at the uh, the potential um, lineups of, of, of obviously what uh, Nottingham Forest could potentially go at in terms of uh, of playing us in, in the cup uh, under Nuno Espirito Santo. Um, there's a name straight away that jumps out that worries me a little bit, and that is Elliot Anderson. Um, I am worried about him and Gibbs White as well as the two main players that could potentially cause us some serious trouble. Um, so we'll get back in the forest a little bit more detail in a second. We're in Newcastle's channel. You want to hear about our team. So here is our team now. I'll pull that light up. So I think it's going to be some changes to the squad. I do think Nick Pope will stay in goal. I just don't think we've got a good enough goalkeeper to rotate. You know, I don't think he'll play the Bravka because then he'll be cup tied. He doesn't want to do that because then maybe he loses some of the ability to sell him. Uh, I don't think Ruddy will start the game because I just think he's, he's a bit old and he's a bit out of practice maybe for the Premier League. So I think Nick Pope will continue in, in the sticks. I think Kieran Trippi will come in at right back. I think he looked really good uh, at the weekend against Bournemouth. And I think this is maybe he had a rethink of the process in terms of selling a player. Um, Eddie's made it quite clear that he wants to be part of the future of the club. And I don't think think we're going to sell him. So I can see Kieran Tripp is starting this game. I think it'll add experience, it'll add quality from set pieces as well and just balances out a little bit on the right-hand side. Now, in the middle, I've changed the slice. I've got Emil Kraft continuing at the right centre-half position, but I put Lloyd Kelly in as a left-sided centre-half. That is his position, in my opinion. I don't think we should really toy with him out on the left-back position a great deal because I just don't think he is that he is a left back. He's just a you know a defender, a centre half shoe down in that position, and he'll step inside all the time. Lewis Hall was great when he come off the bench against Bournemouth. So I think Lewis Hall deserves to start this game as well, and uh, you know give us everything that he can do with that attacking threat down the left hand side. Now here is the big headline of the night: the midfield three. I think it is the return of Sandro Tonali. I really do believe that. He's missed so much football. He's been out for a year. He'll have a point to prove. He'll have the bit between his teeth. He's trained with the lads. You know, for the entire year, yeah, he's not match sharp, but I think Eddie will give him his chance to come on and and, and get a debut, or get you know, get a season debut, first performance, or first appearance in a year. And I think Tonali will get that opportunity against Forest midweek. I think Bruno will stay in the game because I think you'll want to control that midfield, certainly against some of the, the talented players they've got in the middle of the park. Again, some of them are very familiar to us. We'll come back to them in a second. And I think Joe Willock will get a start as well. So I think that's a great midfield three there we're looking at, you know, in terms of, you know, even just changing up and having a bit of flexibility in the game. Joe Linton was poor against Bournemouth. He looked leggy, looked tired. Longstaff, the same. There's no Louis Miley to come in. Obviously, there's no Elliot Anderson anymore because he's playing for them a lot. So I think that's the midfield three that we'll go for. And the front three, I think we'll make some changes there too. Harvey Barnes, again, deserves to come in. I think he was probably always going to start this game anyway. Harvey Barnes on the left-hand side. I think Gordon will be rested. I think we'll, uh, we'll play Usala through the middle. I think he'll get a sniff. I think we'll drop Alexander Rizat, but Eddie could easily play him. Maybe get a goal. 
in, uh, you know, under his belt, but I, I don't think he will. I think you'll have him off the bench. And then Miggy Armour will probably come to the right-hand side and we'll give Jacob Murphy a rest, I think, you know, for, for this game as well. So it's a strong look in your Cash United lineup, really, and you'd like to hope they can get the job done. But but in terms of, uh, of Forrest, I think they'll shuffle the pack a little bit as well. But they've got some dangerous players you need to keep an eye on, you know. So some familiar names like Matt Sells in between the sticks, rubbish at Newcastle, uh, but seems to be doing all right at Forrest. Um, Morello, then you'll have Williams, I think uh, Milenkovic to follow, Yates, Ellie Anderson, Morgan Gibbs White, Dominguez, Alanga, and oh, is it away, 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 no, sorry, I'm trying to get the name right there. It's late, I'm recording this one later, I'm rubbish at pronunciations, but the big lad up front, the number nine, he is a handful as well. So that's how some of the, the websites have had Forest lined up a little bit of a tweak from from the performance that they had with the beat Southampton, the proverbial shit houses at the weekend 1 0 when Chris Wood was playing through the middle. You had Elanga one side, Callum Hudson, Doy, Gibbs White through the middle. You had Ellie Anderson and uh, it was it, it was it Sangara in the in the midfield who both very, very good players, Harbin players. And you had Nico Williams, Milenkovic, Morello, and uh Anya. Uh, at the back there. So there will be some slight changes, I think, to that Nottingham Forest lineup. But that is still a fairly strong Nottingham Forest lineup. And, and the two players that really worry me the most are Elliot Anderson and, and Morgan Gibbs White in particular. So Morgan Gibbs White got a goal at the weekend against Southampton. Just a little bit about his stats as well, about what he did. You know, so you know, 26 out of 33 passes, so a pass and accuracy of 79%. It's a player that we've really looked at, I think, you know, if the, if the rumours are to be believed. You know, in terms of his dribbles, he you know, successfully carried out four of his six dribbles. He actually won nine of his 16 ground duels and two of his three aerial duels. You know, and he put in three tackles and one interception as well. So, so in terms of his key passes as well, three key passes in the game. Morgan Gibbs White is a very, very talented footballer. Somebody who can get on the ball and somebody who can make things happen for Nottingham Forest. And then he's a real danger man. And I think you cast have to be really on their toes to deal with this player. You know, you want a good performance from Bruno. You want a good performance from, from Tenali as well to, to snuff out the danger of Gibbs White, but also press themselves on the game. Another player, again, a very familiar face to us is Elliot Anderson. I'm worried about Elliot Anderson getting his first competitive goal against his hometown club. I just hope it's not the winner. But Elliot was brilliant at the weekend for, for Forrest. I think they're very happy with the sign that they've made. I think he'll go from strength to strength. I'm gutted that he's not a Newcastle player anymore because he would have played this game. I think he would give us legs and aggression in that midfield that we need. He had 33 hours, 36 passes at the weekend, 92% pass and accuracy. Compare that to Sean Longstaff. You know, it wasn't particularly great. Um, you know, he, had, he hit two two out of three long balls. You know, he put three crosses in. He won six of his 12 ground duels and, uh, you know, four tackles, one interception as well. So he's continued that aggressive play that he's got, does uh, Elliot Anderson. And I, and I just think that he's going to be a threat. He really is going to be a threat. And somebody's going to go box to box and could cause us a lot of trouble. Same with uh, Alanga as well. Alanga's pace could really go at us. And that's why we have to play Lewis Hall, I think. We can't play Dan Byrne against this kid because he'll cook him like he did in the Premier League. So this is not going to be an easy game for Newcastle United by any stretch of the imagination. We need a victory in this game. We need to get through the next round of the cup, but we also need a bit of a morale booster as well because the first two performances of the season haven't been great. Yes, we've got four points, but the performances have been really poor. Above all else, we need a good performance, a strong performance against, I think, the best of the three teams that were played, even if they shuffle the deck a little bit, you know, and they take wood out and they put the big man up front and uh, uh, anyway, we were thinking is, I'm trying, I'm trying, guys. Apologies to any Forest fans if I've got that wrong. But, you know, the big number nine lad. He is a danger. He's a handful. I've seen him do some good things. But this player, you know, is going to give us a hard time. But I think if you have Kraft and you have Kelly, we should be able to handle them with physicality and speed and, and pace because, you know, Kelly's got a bit of pace and speed about him. Kraft's no slouch either. So I think we'll do well to to, to handle that guy. You know, it gives way the danger man to watch me, as is a Langer. And Elliot Anderson as well can pop up in dangerous positions. So Newcastle are going to have to be on their toes. But if, if we press with that star 11 that we've got there, Tenali can, can come into the, the game and, and give us what we're all hoping we're going to get from Tenali. You know, we can't put too much pressure on the lad. He's been out for a year. Can't expect miracles straight away, but he'll be chomping at the bit to play in his first competitive fixture for over a year. And if Bruno's alongside him, whipping them up into a frenzy with our captain's armbands on, you know, driving them on every single way. Those two players alone 
should be the best two players in the park, in my opinion. They really, really should be. And they're, they're, they're both in black and white shirts. So hopefully Newcastle will have enough to get the job done. Now, it won't be easy. I'm going to go for 2-1 to Newcastle, just squeaking us through to the next round of the Cup. But this is not going to be an easy game. It could easily go the other way. And Forrest could put us out of the Cup. Now, I think that would be terrible for the morale of the football club, especially with the transfer window closing this week. If we don't get the players that we need, if we lose this game and go out of the Cup, and then we've got Spurs at the weekend, that could be a challenge game as well. Newcastle really need to give a good performance in this game and get the points. So, so get a victory, big pardon, and get through to the next round of the cup. A couple of signs in this week and everything can change. This flat feeling can get right back up again and get us all excited. But let us know in the comments below what you think about the lineup. Do you think that's how we'll go? Do you think Eddie will change it from what we put out there? And how do you think the game is going to go? Are you concerned about Forrest and who's your danger man? For me, it's Morgan Gibbs-White, but swiftly followed by Elliot Anderson as well because I think he'll have a point to prove against us. But let us know in the comments below what you think. Like the video, subscribe, help the channel grow. We'll be back with a post-match analysis of the game. Hopefully, Newcastle United have won and got through the next round in the Cup. And we'll have some signs to talk about this week as well. Have a better. Keep it up more, guys. We'll see you later.